Since its release, I've been more than a little addicted to Theater Rhythm Final Bar Line. It's great in short bursts, the music is unsurprisingly phenomenal, and I simply want to experience everything that it has to offer. To that end, I've managed to complete every single quest in the game, which, in many cases, can be exceedingly tricky. So I wanted to pass on what I've learned to anyone who might be trying to do the same, as there doesn't seem to be any one handy place to discover this. Instead, I had to look for suggestions from players sharing their builds on message boards, which eventually led me in the right direction. But rather than tell you exactly what I did for every quest, I want to guide you through the team builds that helped me finish many of the quests ranked 8 and above, most of which are bosses as they tend to be the trickiest. Before anything else though, just play and unlock all the songs and characters normally and simply enjoy the game. That way you'll have everything available and have a sense of what you need to do for any quest you didn't finish the first time around. It's important to remember though that many of these abilities aren't unlocked until a character reaches level 99 and some must be taught via scrolls. You'll want to have a team at least at level 99 anyway to best guarantee you beat the bosses. But what I discovered very quickly was that my MVP was absolutely Terra. Terra is one of the best characters in terms of magic, and she eventually learns Ultima and Riot Blade, which are perfect for tearing through bosses. Round her out with Dual Cast, which helps those be cast even more, in case there are multiple bosses. It's also well worth teaching her Ruin, as it helps her destroy common enemies more easily, especially in conjunction with Dual Cast. Yuna was my second most helpful character as she's able to decimate with summons which clear out early enemies quickly and can potentially hit bosses hard. Grand Summon is what causes the summon to appear as soon as the song begins, while Mana Seed and Swiftness ensures they come out more often. After that, it's best to tailor the summon to the situation, especially in terms of weaknesses and resistances. I never traded with other players for amazing summon stones, but the 5-20% bonuses to physical attacks, magic attacks, triggers, or summons can all help take down the quest more easily. Keep in mind though that while Knights of the Round and Bahamut hit harder, they also take longer to bring back. Look at how the song goes and decide whether it's better to hit hard and early or consistently throughout the runtime. X-Death is another solid magic user that's useful thanks to the power of the Void, which lowers a boss's magic defense. Round him out with Dual Cast and a Ruin Scroll to have him more easily clear out standard enemies. Graviga is another attack to keep in mind as it could make certain bosses more feasible, especially in conjunction with the Mimic users. The first of the Mimic wielders that I used is Bartz. While I rarely used him in most songs, he is invaluable thanks to that Mimic, especially when a boss is loaded with health. It's thanks to this ability that he's able to essentially carry a strong spell forward to when the boss appears and wipe them out shockingly fast. His other abilities don't especially matter, but I typically loaded him up with Aurora Blade and Aroga Blade to help with the smaller enemies. Ramza is my other Mimic wielder, and he should be used just the same. The rest of his abilities I chose were Weapon Break and Scream, which help augment his base stats. Make no mistake, this method is deadly. The final quest I had to clear was in Dissidia when attempting to defeat Feral Chaos. By choosing Terra as my leader, then Bartz and Ramza to fill out the rest, I was nearly set. The final piece of the puzzle was Spiritus, as he's all about boosting the magic of the leader thanks to Tolerant Wisdom. This is pushed even further by teaching him Mystic Aura. His final ability isn't especially important, but you can either boost everyone even more with focus, or let them damage enemies with a spell like Aroga. Another magic focus character I used for a while was Kuja, as he could also buff the entire party's magic stat thanks to Discarnate Chorus and Faith. Otherwise, give him Ultima to help damage bosses. Then there were the physical based characters starting with Noctis. And while he is focused on physical attacks, all of his stats are solid overall. In terms of abilities, Armager is great for bosses, especially when there are multiple to fight through. Bravery helps increase the physical stat of the party, while First Strike ensures each new set of enemies has some quick damage inflicted. Aranea pairs quite well with Noctis, especially when there are multiple bosses, as she also has an unlimited use boss attack, High Wind. Otherwise, I gave her Berserk to increase her strength and Ultima Blade to do extra damage to the first boss she fights. Garland is another solid physical character choice that's great for buffing the party's attack stat thanks to Deranged Soul, Bravery, and Mystic Aura. Silence Buster is also a solid choice if a boss uses status effects that delays the party from doing immediate damage. 
Then there's Ferris, who focuses on quick damage and lowering enemy defense. Equip her with dual wield for multiple ability uses, first strike for quick consistent damage, and provoke for lowering that defense. My final main party member was Athmal, a support type that's perfect for getting standard attacks out more quickly and more often thanks to realignment. Otherwise, I equipped her with Faith and Imperil to help defeat minor enemies faster. Now, while these are all my main characters, they don't always fit into every situation. Depending on the quest, there are four other choices that may work for you. First is Gilgamesh, who is perfect for a physical focus party thanks to Morphing Time and Meteor Blade. He can be enhanced even further by teaching him bravery as well. Next is Shantoto, who is essentially the magic equivalent of Gilgamesh, as she can greatly boost her own magic as well as the parties with a wide array of supplemental spells. Then there's Materia, who works like Spiritus, boosting the leader except with a focus on physical stats. I never used her much, but I wanted to suggest her in case you prefer a physical build. Finally, there's Lightning Number 2, who, like Avmal, can reduce the required triggers for spells. That said, she's less effective at it, though she has more options in terms of attacks. Of course, as you play through each of the stages, your characters will likely get a few star levels to help buff them further, and don't be afraid to use the stat-enhancing items to really tear through some of the bosses. Personally, I saved them for the final few quests just to make sure I had enough, but it's not too difficult to earn more if necessary thanks to a hunter team focused on obtaining items in treasure chests. And those are my primary characters that got me through all of the most challenging quests in Theater Rhythm. It could definitely take a few tries, but I honestly had a blast trying to figure out the best team composition. Personally, my go-to team was Terra, Noctis, Yuna, and X-Death, while Noctis, Garland, Aranea, and Ferris were my reliable physical focus team. Don't be afraid of experimenting a little once you have a sense of the way abilities work, and be sure to look through your summon stones. The rarest one isn't always the best. You might have some hidden gems in there. Thanks so much for watching, and feel free to offer up your own tips and party lineups in the comments below. I'd love to know how much you're enjoying Theater Rhythm, and if you intend to go after every feat. I know I'm considering it. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to Good Vibes Gaming, hitting the like button, and ringing that bell. We also have a Patreon at patreon.com slash gvgaming with plenty of extra perks. Until next time, bye.